fourth gospel, the gospel of John. There's a reason why the eagle has always been associated with the gospel of John. It's because the eagle is the king of the wild birds. It is the, the ruler that flies high over all other birds and all other creatures and sees with keen insight things that others do not see. And that's exactly how the Gospel of John was understood from the beginning. One of the famous sayings about John is that it is shallow enough for a child to swim in and simultaneously deep enough for an elephant to swim in. This vision of the profundity and the accessibility of John at the same time is absolutely crucial to the beauty and the power that the fourth gospel is. And it really does stand at the end of the fourfold gospel book because it's recognized as sort of being the consummation and the completion and the highest form of a gospel story. One of the ways that John's highness is found is that he has the clearest Christology and the clearest Trinitarian formulations. There's no doubt, I mean, I think you could easily get it from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but there's absolutely no doubt in John that Jesus is being portrayed as the incarnation of God himself. I and the Father are one, Jesus says. Right from the beginning, John begins, the logos, the very breath and speaking of God became flesh. There's no doubt that the Christology is the highest in the Gospel of John. And likewise, the relationship of the Son to the Father and the Spirit is very explicit and talked about in all kinds of ways in the Gospel of John. So very high Christology, very high and clear Trinitarian language. We can also recognize about John something that at first may be a little disconcerting, and that is that actually there's very little overlap between the Gospel of John and the Gospels we're already familiar with, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In fact, According to our calculations, there's only about 8 or 10% overlap in stories between John and the other three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, what we call the synoptics. Now that's a little disturbing at first. You may think, what's going on? But the result of that overlap is an incredible richness that John, who I, along with many other scholars, would say was aware of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In other words, John seems to be pretty clearly aware of the synoptic gospels. He's writing much later by not just repeating everything they did, he has some key connection points, but by giving us a whole bunch of other, like 90% or more of his gospel is unique to him, he provides a richness to his contribution to the fourfold book that the others do not have. In fact, one of the most striking things about John is how few stories he has. Even though he has a lot of unique material, he doesn't have very many stories. He tells long, elaborate, complicated, beautiful, tense theological stories. It's very different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which tell short, pithy little episodes. So John's fewer stories with little overlap with high Christology and Trinity all combines together to make an amazing eagle sight book. The fourth gospel, the one that consummates and completes the great fourfold gospel book.